Road wisdom from the motor. Half man, half motorcycle. In life, there is no stopping. Don't stop. But if you do, make sure no one is behind you. All clear. Progressive Motorcycle also presents basic policy starting at $79 a year. Progressive Motorcycle, for those who were born to ride. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates annual premium for basic liability policy is not available in all states. Great food, great atmosphere, and great service is Atavola Market Cafe. Atavola is simply a restaurant that focuses on that, being a great restaurant. There's something for everyone at Atavola. The menu offers a variety of great choices like pastas, pizzas, sandwiches, soups, salads, and seasonal rotating selections. Lunch or dinner, Atavola is always the right call. Call ahead and get Atavola to go. Or stop by the bar for a drink with friends. It's simple. Come and eat at Atavola Market Cafe, Red Banks Road next to Food Lion, and AtavolaMarket.com. Atavola, pirates supporting pirates. Naughty Dog Brewing Company would like to thank everyone for voting them one of the best breweries in 2020. Stop by Naughty Dog this holiday season for a cold one with friends and family, or pick up some crowlers to go. Naughty Dog also has gift cards and cool swag, perfect for presents. Naughty Dog has new beer releases every month, plus a great selection of wine, seltzers, and ciders. Also, don't forget about the pub run every Monday at 6.15. Naughty Dog Brewing Company on Main Street in downtown Winterville, and a fun follow on Facebook and Instagram. Your CBD store in Greenville has the highest quality CBD products in the country. Your CBD store is the first and only brand that carries USDA certified organic products such as gummies, honey sticks, and high absorption water soluble liquids which are all made in the United States. They even offer products for your pet. The educated staff will help you answer any questions and you can stop in anytime to get a free sample. Your CBD store, locally owned and operated, open Monday through Saturday 10 to 6 right beside Duck Donuts in Greenville. Medicare is not one size fits all, but which plan is right for you? Hi, I'm Denise Walker and I'm a licensed insurance agent here in North Carolina. Whether you are turning 65, new to Medicare, or already have a plan, I can help you compare your Medicare options. I can help you find a plan offering low to no monthly premiums, prescription drug coverage, and a wide range of additional benefits like dental, hearing, vision, and more. Call me today at 434-531-5674 to get a no-cost, no-obligation Medicare benefits review. Hidden phone trade-ins, hidden plan requirements, hidden catches. You won't find any of those at U.S. Cellular because we do things differently. And that means you can get the Samsung Galaxy S20 FE or Google Pixel 5 for free with no hidden requirements all season long. U.S. Cellular. Upgrade to fair. Terms and conditions apply. See store uscellular.com for details. Does the idea of going to your local U.S. Cellular store make you feel a bit uncomfortable? Tired of the hassle of waiting and wearing a mask? Let Toby Williams and his outside sales team take away that worry. They will come right to your home or office and drop your phone off on the porch or at the front desk for you. Saving you time and worry is what the team at Cellular Warehouse is all about. Call Toby today at 252-799-7051 and let them help you with all of your wireless needs. Cellular Warehouse, your local U.S. Cellular authorized agent. This is Ashley, and on behalf of the whole Shimmer Boutique crew, we would like to say thank you for voting us Best Gift Shop and Best Women's Boutique in 2020. We could not have done it without you, and we hope that you will shop with us this holiday season. Shimmer carries a wide variety of men's, youth, women's clothing, and jewelry, as well as home goods. Shimmer is your one-stop shop for the whole family this holiday season. Plus, we will always offer complimentary gift wrapping. Shimmer Boutique, located on Greenville Boulevard behind Starbucks, in Winterville besides New River Pottery, and in Jacksonville's Mall. Got big dreams for your small business? You're not alone. The Gavigan Agency Insurance Services is a growing business too. That's why they work with Nationwide, the number one small total business insurer in the U.S. Nationwide can help protect and grow your business so you can focus on making your small business dreams come true. Give the Gavigan Agency Insurance Services a call today at 252-756-1400. Nationwide is on your side. Nationwide Mutual Insurance Company and Affiliates, Columbus, Ohio. Subject to underwriting guidelines, review, and approval. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930 at 104.1 FM Washington. The following is an exclusive presentation of Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. 
This is Eastern North Carolina's longest-running sports radio call-in show. The Brian Bailey Show is on the air. The Brian Bailey Show on Pirate Radio is brought to you by Bostic Sug Furniture, Bojangles, East Coast Grady, Angus Grill, Gavigan Insurance, BMS Builders, The Rick House, Greenville Auto World, Papa John's, Pepsi, Taft Taft and Hagler, and by Tiebreakers. And now, here's Brian Bailey. Okay, happy Monday, everybody, and welcome into the Brian Bailey Show after a great weekend of sports for East Carolina Athletics. We'll talk about all of that coming up for the next hour. We'll start with Pirate Basketball. East Carolina off to a 1-0 start, and live in the studio with us is Steve Rockefort. He is the associate head coach and recruiting coordinator for Joe Dooley on that East Carolina basketball staff, and as I said, he's live in the studio. We'll take your questions or comments on our Facebook Live page, and I'll get those over to Coach Rock. But first of all, congratulations on the big win. Nice way to start on the road and yeah. get a win. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it was good for our guys, and uh, you know, it was really, really different because that's the first time you've ever played in front of zero. <laughs> I know. People. I was going to ask about that. Yeah, it was. It was. It's kind of weird, you know. But uh, again, it's similar to uh, the those close scrimmages that we've been having yeah. over the last few years. Except you're in full uniform and there's real referees there. Yeah. Those close scrimmages were kind of odd, too, because it was one of those deals you, you could have the scrimmage, nobody was there, and you really weren't supposed to talk about it. It was one of those, you know, and, and people did talk about it, obviously, but but still, but this was the real deal, and, and we had a chance to watch it. And the first thing I thought of when I saw the guys walk on the floor, it was such a great feeling to say, I know that guy, I know that guy, I know that, because that hasn't happened around here in a long time, except for Jaden. Well, I, I, I think that's... Uh when you're trying to have a sustainable winning program and atmosphere, I think uh, the more guys that you can have back, as long as those guys are good enough right. to help you win, then uh, it makes everything that much easier because um, they know coach, they know what Joe likes, what Joe doesn't like. They they have a great feel for his system and how he wants them to play on offense and defense. So the, there's a familiarity you know, back and forth between the coaches and the players and the players and the players. And uh, I think that is really going to help us. You know, when you look at that Charlotte game, you know, you know what you're going to get out of Jaden night in and night out. But those other guys, I mean, everybody, when you go through the sheet, and we'll go through it, you know, the specifics later, but but it's like every guy you can think about, oh, he had a key shot here, he had a key shot there. And and you guys got it inside us several times and missed little ones that you're going to make most of the time. Yeah, and, and we've talked talked about it watched film on it um you know if if we uh finish more plays around right. the basket like a couple of times we got a turnover and instead of converting on the other end they came down and scored you know the score could have been more than what it was and i think uh anytime you haven't played against any outside competition and you went through the prolonged off season that we went through and you're only practicing against each other um you know there's a lot of things that are going to have some slippage in it you know your first go round. but you know all in all i i thought it was i thought it was really good i thought it was really good for for coach i thought it was really good for our guys i, I thought guys responded um and i thought he was really patient with them and and you know we we won a good game what's it like coaching with that mask on uh, it's a little different, you know. You gotta you gotta pull it down. I mean, it's just hard to understand, right? People talking, you know, when you have the, the you mask can't even on. go to sheets and, and explain what you're trying to, you know, order or get a no. drink or get the change or anything else with that mask on. I can I can't imagine when you when you're talking to an athlete during a game. Of course, you don't have any crowd noise now, but but still, it's hard to, to get your point across. Well, they also at, at Charlotte they had plex uh, uh, about a six. Probably about a six foot three inch plexiglass wall between the scoring table and the bench area. Okay, so it was almost like you were in the, uh, you know, like in hockey when they, they send, <laughs> yeah, send you into, into the boards. The, yeah, when they send you into the box. <laughs> so it, it, with that plexiglass, and then you have the chairs positioned the way they are. Yeah. I mean, it's it's weird. Yeah. I mean, you can get up and walk, you know walk around i mean it's just it's just really different when you guys lost the end of the season or the tournament for east carolina uh did you think that you'd still be we'd all still be dealing with this, this thing when we came around no I, no i just told somebody this not too long ago um we were in fort worth 
uh, getting ready to play the University of Memphis. All right. We were on game day. Right. It was game day. And we had already had team breakfast. We had already uh, shot in Dickey's Arena. Mm-hmm. And then we went to TCU to walk through Memphis's stuff. Um, and I had my 14-year-old daughter with me because she lives in Louisiana and we were in Fort Worth, so it's not that far away. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, we're, we're at sh- doing what we're about to do and Coach says, hey, uh, I... I don't have a lot of time to explain this, but the game's off. Get on the bus, and we'll explain it at the hotel. So we turn around, get our stuff, get on the bus, go to the hotel, tell tell the guys what's up, and um, say, all right, can you guys go upstairs, pack, take a shower, and be down in, in 40 minutes. So they head off to the airport. I stayed with my daughter because I had to bring her home. Well, everything's shutting down, so I'm in a – I drive her back the next day and I get a room at the Courtyard Marriott in Bossier City, Louisiana and I'm thinking this is going to last for about two weeks and then everything will go back to normal and after about four or five days yeah. I got a, I got a flight back here as fast as I could because I said I don't want to get stuck in a courtyard in Bossier City, Louisiana. Maybe <laughs> me there. Yeah, it was just it, it was it was such a depressing time too because all the things that, that you know and you guys as coaches, I mean you know part of the deal is you guys all go to the Final Four for your meetings and and all of that. But March Madness is such a such an institution in, in our country and what everybody loves and and the goal with East Carolina is to get into that tournament one of these days and uh, get back to it uh, since what was ninety three. When East Carolina was was in it before, but but I mean, all that was taken away from us, and and all of us have those individual stories about how we found out this and that. It's just it was just nuts, and I really thought by the time we got to the summer that things would be a lot you know different. But football season has been really bizarre. Basketball season, I, I feel for you guys because I think I think you guys are going to have, and you've already had some problems, but you're going to have issues every single game. I think is is going to be in doubt until you tip it off. No, I agree. Yeah, I agree with you. And uh, you know what? We're we're trying to soldier on. You know, mm-hmm. we're trying to get it in when we can. And and you know, we've been fortunate. Um, you know, we haven't missed very much time at all yeah. with our guys since we started. And uh, you know, I think that's a credit to you know Joe and the way that he's planned the workouts and the things. You know, he's put a lot of time and a lot of thought into it. Um, and I think it's also a credit to our guys because you know they understand the importance of uh, if we're going to do this and and be tested and do all these things there's certain things we can do and certain things we can't do well um, how's the testing going for you so far do you, do you enjoy that uh I, I told somebody today i think i've been tested probably over 35 to 40 times already and right now we're testing every day and we have been for about eight or nine days wow every day every That's day even worse than football so so, so it's it. one day it's one test the next day it's two tests yeah. one test two tests one test two tests man that's just that's just tough to take isn't it i mean you just i mean it is what it is but it, you have to do it or, or you can't play yeah so you know you just rela- <laughs> relax you soldier on i like yeah, that yeah you just you that that was our that was our thing. That's what uh, that's what Joe and the the doctor said. Soldier on, so. soldier on is right. All right, we got Steve Rockefort. He's the associate head coach at East Carolina under Joe Dooley. Live with us in the studio. We'll take your questions and comments on our Facebook live feed, and we'll continue on talking pirate basketball on this Monday. Back after this. <laughs> The Rick House is Eastern North Carolina's premier American-styled restaurant and bar. Join us at the Rick House for mouth-watering steaks and the best burgers around. Check out the spicy mahi risotto or the bourbon pecan salmon. Wednesday night is date night. Two salads, an appetizer, a bottle of wine, two entrees, and a dessert for just $55. Thursday is ladies' night with $5 martinis and special apps. The Rick House, American provisions and spirits, 710 Red Banks Road beside the bowling alley in Greenville. The Rick House. Hi, I'm Ken Hagler of Taft, Taft & Hagler. 
We're proud to be sponsors of The Brian Bailey Show and The Pirate Nation on Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. If you've been injured on the job or due to someone else's negligence in an automobile collision, call us at 752-2000 for a free consultation with experienced professionals who care. Go Pirates! means more meat bounces. Get any papadilla like the new double cheeseburger papadilla for just six bucks. Papa John's. Hey, Pirate fans, the papadillas are part sandwich, part pizza, and only $6 each. The new cheeseburger papadilla is an MVP move for game day or any day. Place your order online at papajohns.com and sign up for Papa Rewards. Papa John's, the official pizza of the ECU Pirates. East Coast Grading and Utilities is your source for clearing, hauling dirt, and concrete work. East Coast Grading and Utilities handles all sewer and water issues as well. I'm David Vaughn. Whether it's putting in a new subdivision or helping you with any and all of your drainage problems, I can get the job done. Call me at 531-7494. No job is too big or too small. East Coast Grading and Utilities. Friends helping friends. 531-7494. For East Coast Grading and Utilities. Utilities. White Claw Hard Seltzer. Discover a new wave of refreshment. Crafted using seltzer water, 5% alcohol, and a hint of fruit. Available in five fruit flavors, two grams of carbs, gluten free, and 100 calories. Find it at whiteclaw.com. White Claw Hard Seltzer. Nothing tastes quite like it. Please drink responsibly. Hard seltzer with natural flavors. White Claw Seltzer Works, 2019 Chicago. Visit whiteclaw.com for full nutritional information. Let us help you get back to business. This is Donald Stocks and Justin Judge of PIP of Eastern North Carolina. We're ready to assist your business with branded PPE. Would you like face masks with your logo? We can do that. Plus custom social distancing signage. Now is the time to ramp up your marketing efforts. Whether it's cutting edge, contactless, touchless marketing, or traditional direct mail, we can do it all. We are PIP PIP of of Eastern Eastern North North Carolina. Carolina. This is Coach Gary Overton, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show. Now, back to Brian. All right, welcome back to our show. Steve Rockaford is live in our studio today, the associate head coach at East Carolina for Pirate Basketball, taking your questions and comments on our Facebook live feed. And Josh has written in, and we kind of talked about this a little bit, Coach, but I'll let you talk about it a little bit more. He says, how is a great win Friday, and how much easier is it to coach this team given that most everybody on the team was here last season as well? We touched on it a little bit, but it's very comforting when you throw those guys out there, isn't it? I, I I think that we have really good dudes. Yeah, so, I mean, I like those guys. I like being around them. They like being around each other. I think coach enjoys coaching them, um, and they really w- want to be here. And I think that they understand that we have a chance to be good. I think they want to win, and uh, it's it's a it's a lot easier, man. When you have the the, the most returners, it's a lot easier to coach. And you look at what Coach Dooley always says, we got to get old and we got to stay old. And this program hasn't been old in a long time. Yeah, and, uh, you know, getting the extra year like they're right. giving us, that allows us to stay old a little longer. So, um, you know, the, the, the good and the bad of it, it, it's always the same, man. When you do this stuff, um, you're always measured on wins and losses. It doesn't matter, you know. Yeah, we want everybody to graduate. Yeah, we want to raise a lot of money. Right. Yeah, we want a lot of people in the stands. But the bottom line, you got to win games. And if you're going to be successful at the highest level, you have to win. And uh, I think we're suited for that right now. And now we have to take advantage of our opportunities. And the American is such a difficult league in all sports for East Carolina. But when you think about basketball, this is a league that you know usually gets multiple teams in the tournament. And that's that's the goal. If you get into the upper half of this league, you'll be talked about for you know the NIT, the NCAAs. I mean and that's that's the goal. Yeah, and and I think uh you know, I, and again, I'm speaking just from from my personal experiences. Like when when we went to Virginia Tech, you know, Virginia Tech had had been in last place four years in a row. Yeah, we come in, we come in last place five years in a row. The next year, we win 20 games and go to the NIT, the second round of the NIT. Um, but that was a big deal. 
and we had a watch party for the NIT. I mean, it was a big deal to the fans. It was a big deal to the people yeah. because they hadn't had success in a while. Um, and then NCAA, NCAA, then it, it culminated with the Sweet 16. Right. And it's not easy to do, um, but I think that if you have the right people and if you have the right players, then uh, – it's easier than what people think. And I think this is a similar situation. You know, we have great facilities, a, a really nice campus. Um, the, you know, people enjoy being here and, and you know, just I, I just think it has a, a good atmosphere. And I think our players, you know, understand that. So, um, you know, we, we have to stay together and we got to fight the fight together. And But we have an opportunity uh to to do some special things and i think i think we have the capabilities to do that right now brennan writes in and says do you think the three ball will start falling as the season goes on yeah i think i I think our biggest thing uh with that is uh is we have to shoot and i know this is going to sound elementary but we we need to shoot wide open threes and the way you shoot a wide open three is it's going to be off a driving kick. It's going to be off an extra pass. It's going to be uh, by moving the ball and not sticking the ball at all. And it's also about guys making good decisions. You know, if I can take this shot and the guy's, you know, a foot away from me and I can make the extra pass and that guy has nobody around him for five feet, then we're going to shoot the ball a lot better. And um, if you saw some of the – the, the 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 highlights or or some of the action from Charlotte, you know, we shot some contested shots. You're not gonna you're not gonna shoot a high percentage when you right. do that. And you know, a lot of people have a different m- conception of of shooting threes. You know, I don't I don't think you create threes off the dribble. I don't think you uh, make a move to get a three. I think it should be a wide open shot. And I think that. You know, if we're patient and we continue to move the ball, because our guys are not selfish, they understand that. But the the better shots we shoot, the more uncontested shots we shoot, the more we're going to make. The more we make, the higher our percentage. The higher our percentage, the more points we score. The more points we score, the more games we win. That's how it goes. Josh also writes in and says Tristan Newton had a great first half. Was that by design, or did he just come out on fire? No, I think that was just. I, I think he had a section of that first half where we needed to score and he took it upon himself to be more aggressive you know he uh i i just think certain players have certain skill sets and capabilities and i think the thing with him is you know he's played a lot of basketball and he's played against a lot of good players um he started uh on varsity since he was a, a freshman you know in texas and they traveled and they played different people and whenever regardless if he was in ninth grade or 10th grade whoever they played against who was a high level player he always had really good games he also scored a lot of points he did and his senior year i think he averaged like 37 38 points a game and uh we went back and looked uh we looked at how many points he scored as a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, we added them up. And then we looked up what the all-time leading scores in the state of Texas, even though for some reason they don't do that. And we have him ranked as the fifth high scorer wow. ever in the, in, state the, of Texas. in the state of Texas. That's in a big the state ever. now. Yeah, and a yeah. lot of good players. Uh, have been. And he was, and he led the state his senior year, didn't he? That was documented. He led the state in scoring his senior year. Yeah, and I just think that when you have that skill set and, and, and when you're used to doing things like that, it's an instinct. And I think instinctually he is looking to score. And I think that's a good thing for us. And that was a good thing, too, because you guys got down, what, 10 in the first half? Maybe. Yeah, I think it was 10. And, and, and you guys bounced, you know, it, there was no, you know, there, there was no panic. There was nothing like that. It was just, you know, steadily getting back in the game. And, and the guys, you know, the guys came through. I, I think they, I think they like playing together. And I think they really, really like each other. And I think that, you know, people don't understand how important that is those guys enjoy being around each other they enjoy playing together um, and i think they all have the same goal they they want to go to the ncaa tournament from here they want to win championships they want to you know go to postseason play every single year they want to be mentioned 
you know, in the top half of the league, like you said. And uh, in order to do that, it takes a lot of hard work. It takes sacrifice. But it takes those guys working together, and I think they will. I was talking to Coach Julie the other day, and he said, he said the weird part about this whole thing in the preseason is that every time we scrimmage, we've got 10 of them out there trying to score. Well, when we go start and play other teams, we've only got five of them out there, and those other five are going to have to figure out you know, their role and how they handle all that. But, but it looked like after game one, I mean, you got guys, I just love a guy who, who sits on the bench and cheers his team on, and then he goes in the game and makes a key shot. Baruti did it the other day. Big three. When you guys were struggling from the three. I mean, he's, he's and he seems to like that role, and he, he, he flourished in it. Well, and, and that's another reason why I think these guys have a chance to be good, because if you watched our bench last year, our bench was lively. Our bench was into it. Our bench was cheering for guys. And, and I think taking it a step further from what you said, Whenever you take a guy out, he's not always happy to be coming out of the game. That's right. And when you're trying to talk to him and the guy that goes in for him hits a shot and while you're trying to talk to him, they're cheering. They're mad at you, but they're cheering for the guy that went in for him. Then you yeah. know you're you're you got some good guys. Yeah, and that's 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 a key. I mean, I, I just I go back to what I said to start the show. When, when those guys walked on the floor, and I thought all these faces that I recognize because that's really hard when you cover a team like we do, and you go to like the first game or so, you go to a practice even. And this year it's been different because of COVID. But to, to see, I, I would have hated to have all those guys renew during a COVID year because we, we we don't get to see them or meet them or anything. But last year we met them. We know their personalities a little bit. We we know how they are and. So this COVID thing will be just a, a temporary setback as far as that goes, as far as getting with them with interviews and, and that kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, that's that's that says a whole lot because you've got to play. You've got to have eight or nine that you can count on. Oh, yeah. Night and, in and night out. And, and you have to have eight or nine that you count on in your rotation. But injuries and different things are going to happen, and guys have to be prepared to step up and, and play. And that's why, you know, it's easier said than done, but you have to go to practice if you're not one of those guys in that rotation. And you got to go practice harder, and you got to play better, and you got to play better than the guys in your position are playing in front of you on a daily basis. And that's how you'll get in the game. That's how you'll keep yourself sharp and ready to play. And that's one of those things that, that when you look at, at guys that, that, that battle and, and – and try to get in the game. And sometimes you go through a half a season, and then all of a sudden some guy will come off the bench, and, and, and he's a star all of a sudden just because he's waited patiently, he's worked hard. You get an injury here, injury there, and they happen, and you're going to lose guys for you know multiple. You hope you don't, but usually you do, and these guys have to come through. you got to say the right things. you got to do the right things, and you got to think the right things. And if you're doing that on a daily basis and your number's called, you'll play great. And if they call your number and you play bad, you know what he's been saying. He know, you know what he's been thinking, and you know what he's been doing. There you go. All right, Pirate Al writes in and says, Hey, Rock, what position are you looking for with that last scholarship? Um, you know, it, probably as the season goes on, we'll probably know a little bit more. Um, you know, it's hard to say. You know, I mean, if we, uh, if we win the AAC, we probably don't need anything. Yeah. You know, if all these guys are coming back. But, you know, that's kind of the state of – what we're in um you know we're 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 really really i don't think about it because i'm around them all the time but we're really really big oh yeah i mean we're tall and we're long and we have big guys and you know even the perimeter guys i mean a guy like brandon suggs he's like six 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 seven jj miles six 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 seven right i mean those are big they guards. Look, they look the part when they get off the bus, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Tristan Newton, six five. Yeah. You know, and and so I mean, we're we're tall, we're long, we're athletic. Um, we've got good bigs. Um, we, I mean, we have a little bit of everything in the mix right now. So I mean, we'll just have to see how everything you know plays out going down the stretch. What's it mean to get a guy like Luigi back? Because he came in as a transfer, was hurt. You guys decided to set him down last year, but to have him back out there. Well, I, I think the first thing is 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 uh, you know that was that was Joe Dooley's decision. Mm -hmm. That wasn't Luigi's decision. He could have continued to try to play, and maybe he could have made the year with therapy and right. monitoring. You know his injury, but. Uh, 
we, Joe didn't want to take a chance. You know, Joe wanted to do the right thing for Luigi yep. and the right thing for his career and for his longevity and down the road, not just for what was happening right now, which I think in the end, um, you know, that that pays big dividends. I think Joe cares about these guys. He wants them to, to have the right stuff. He, he wants those guys to have the ability to, to, to be successful in whatever they decide to do. I think I think the extra year, the red shirt plus him getting another year is huge for him. Right. Because he is a really good guy. He's a great guy. He's a hard worker. He always has a smile on his face. I mean, he's in there busting it 24-7, but he's a great guy. And good things happen to good people, man, that put the work in like that. And he has just made huge progress over the summer. He's going to be really, really good. And, and you know, here's a, here's a guy who can be really, really good. And he may not be NBA material, but he can make a lot of money overseas. A big guy like that, 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 that it's a good guy. You know, those guys, they don't want to bring in any, any clowns. They want to bring guys that can, you know, compete and play the game. And that's, that, there's a lot of money to be made. But players, players are starting to figure that out. You know, uh, whether it's the NBA or overseas, um, People aren't giving people millions and millions of dollars to be late. That's right. They're, they're not giving people millions and millions of dollars to, to not know whether they can trust you or depend on you. And so if you're really good and you work really hard and you're really dependable and you're early and you stay late, they'll pay you. Yeah. If you don't, they're not anymore. And that doesn't matter, you know, whether you're overseas, NBA, you know, they're not looking for that stuff. Steve Rockefeller's live in the studio with us. We're taking your questions and comments on our Facebook live feed, and they continue to pour in, so we certainly appreciate that. We'll take another commercial break. Back with more on this Monday. It was supposed to be a rainy Monday. Right now it's not in our live edition. Back with more after this. This is Jeff Charles, and this is a Pirate Radio Sports Break presented by Ron Ayers Motorsports. North of the airport on Highway 11 in Greenville, the Toys for Tots motorcycle ride is this Saturday beginning at 11 a.m. at Ron Ayers. Former Pirate right-hander Jeff Hoffman has been traded to the Cincinnati Reds from the Colorado Rockies in a four-player swap. The 27-year-old Hoffman had a 9.28 ERA in 16 appearances for the Rockies this year. He leaves Colorado with a career record of 10 and 16. The Panthers dropped to 28 to 20. 27 decision to the Vikings. Joey Sly missed a 54 yard field goal attempt with one second remaining. Carolina drops to 4 and 8. The Chiefs got by the Bucks 27 to 24. Kansas City is now 10 and 1. The Falcons crushed the Raiders 43 to 6. Former Pirate Zay Jones, one catch for three yards for Las Vegas. Last night in the game heard right here on Pirate Radio, Green Bay over Chicago. The final was 41 to 25. This has been a Pirate Radio Sports Break. Here today with Redbox, also known as Jay Klingensmith, to his friends and family, why F3? I started at F3, uh, I just wanted to get some fellowship back out there, start exercising, and just have fun in the mornings. Gives you something to look forward to, it always starts your day off great. One letter, one number, F3. Fitness, fellowship, and faith. All workouts are free of charge and open to all men. Leave no man behind, but leave no man where you find him. Learn more today at F3ENC.com. Hey, this is Jay from Villa Verde. Did you know the Villa Verde opened up its second location? Yes, it's Villa Verde Dos on Arlington Boulevard across the hospital. This new location is a fast casual environment where you can make your own bowls for only $9.95. Choose from our fresh ingredients from our toppings bars or enjoy an amazing rotisserie chicken. We promise you can be in and out in less than 15 minutes. For a quick healthy meal at an affordable price, visit us at Villa Verde Dos on Arlington Boulevard. Villa Verde, a platform for good. Hey, Pirate fans, get ready for a winning season and get things done right with the John Deere Tractor Package from Quality Equipment. You can't afford to lose on your home turf, so we'll help you get the driveway done right at the right price. Right now, our 1023E driveway package starts as low as $148 per month. So get quality done right before every ECU football weekend. Visit qualityequip.com. Offer ends 12 2020 Subject to approved installment credit with John Deere Financial. Some restrictions apply. See dealer for details. This is Stephen Igo, publisher of HoistTheColors.net. 
Recruiting is the lifeblood of any college sports program, and no one devotes more coverage to the future of ECU athletics than Hoist the Colors. Want to know who's going to be the next Holt Nailers or Jaden Gardner? We've got all the inside scoop on the Pirates' most talented recruits and top targets 24-7. Sign up now and get your first month of coverage for a single dollar. HoistTheColors.net, the most reliable reporting on ECU athletics. Pirate Radio. Go Pirates! Go Pirates! Ah, yeah. The voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show. Now, back to Brian. All right, welcome back on this Monday. Steve Rockefeller, Coach Rock is in the studio live with us, taking your questions and comments on our Facebook live feed. John writes in and says, are you guys looking to add more games as of now or content with how the schedule sets up? And how fluid is this this whole schedule thing? Oh, it's fluid. Yeah, I'd say. Um, I mean, we've scouted so many opponents that <laughs> yeah. we haven't played. That's a that, waste of time, isn't oh, it? Oh, <laughs> yeah, and, it, and it's tedious. You know, it's tedious work. Um, but, you know, we've added a game on Tuesday at 5. That wasn't on our schedule. Right. We're playing Saturday. I don't know what time, but that game was already on our schedule. So uh, we'll adjust as everything is adjusted, if that makes sense. Saturday's at 2. I did not know that it was at 2. I was thinking it was 7 for some reason, but it's at 2. And I joked with you, why play at 5 o'clock tomorrow? You can play at 1 o'clock and get it done, right? Out of, out of my pay grade. <laughs> That's right. have you no idea. You don't have any... Thing. Maybe it takes a little while to get over there from Rocky Mount to uh, to play that game. But 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 that's that's a, a close opponent. I sent Joe a text the day that Duke had to cancel theirs, and I said, hey, Coach, Duke's looking for a game. If you guys are looking for one, and he just said they hadn't talked to anybody from Duke. But uh, that would have been that would been nice to go up to Cameron Indoor, wouldn't it? Well, it depends. <laughs> I mean, it was never nice when I was at Virginia Tech and we went in. <laughs> I bet it wasn't. They're trying to rip your ears off. Yeah. Well, they're a little nicer to the in-state folks. Well, you know, it's, it, it, that's how that's how you measure things. You know, like I always said, we were good enough. We were we got good enough to beat Duke at home and North Carolina yeah. at home, but we weren't good enough to beat them over there. Yeah, well, that's that's a tough. Not, they're hard not, places to play. Yeah, not many, and, and all that's changed too. I mean, just think about the and and you think about the advantage that Duke has at Cameron Indoor with the Cameron Crazies. You even think about East Carolina. You know, you guys. You know. <laughs> win some games win some games and all of a sudden you, you got a big conference game and you know you're going to get more people than, than normal in there and and Minji's is a great home court advantage when there's a crowd the, I, I thought last year you and, and I, I just envision and, and see you know like uh, for the first home game last year I thought that I don't know what the number on that crowd was but I thought it was unbelievable and I thought it was loud and I thought they were into it and it looked like there was a bunch of people in the gym. But but really, all year long, the crowd was really good last year. And I think the fans showed up. I think they recognized that we had, had a chance and that these guys, um, like you said, had a chance to be together and do some things that maybe haven't been done before. And, and uh, the, the crowds have been unbelievable. And now it's pretty much a case of, of the teams that can handle – you know the scrimmage type atmosphere. The best are the ones that are going to you know really benefit from it. I mean, you you have to you have to create. It's kind of like in football when East Carolina would go into some of those stadiums. You know, like this year when they went down to South Florida and played in Raymond James. You know, and even though there weren't that many fans because of COVID, there's never many fans in those big NFL teams. You have to create your own excitement, create your own energy, and that's pretty much what you have to do in this age of COVID right now. Yeah, so, some people have been playing in COVID stadiums for a long time. <laughs> exactly, they, they just didn't know it. <laughs> yeah. They were they were ahead of their time with the COVID, but I mean, yeah, it's just it's just a matter of of guys have to to really create their own energy and 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 that's got to be, you know, because you really love it when you go up and you slam one home and the crowd goes nuts, basket in the foul, and everybody's going crazy, and you're just not going to get that at least not to start the year. There's some hope that maybe this thing will slow down a little bit, and maybe the first of the year comes around and restrictions will be lessened. I don't think we're ever going to get to where we get a, a big crowd for basketball this year, but hopefully some of the upstairs they'll, they'll let some fans in up there. It's up what we hope. There's, there's no guarantee. Yeah, I think I think. Uh, you know, fan, fans are a big part of it, man. They're they're a big part of, you know, being in stadiums, being in gyms. You know, whether it's baseball, football, basketball, whatever it is. So, um, 
you know, we, we need to try to get back to normal as soon as we can. Another question coming in. It says, aside from the three-point shot, what other areas of play are you most focused on improving from game one to game two? Well, I think in order to, to, to be a championship-level team or a postseason team, you have to you have to really, really defend. You know, your your defense has to be what you hang your hat on, defense and rebounding. And uh, we're going to work on that every single day. Um because we know that that's what it's going to take. There are going to be games where you don't shoot the ball particularly well uh, or your best players don't play good, but if you're continually defending and rebounding, limiting people to one shot, you know, using our height and our length to bother shots and, and contest shots uh, and, and putting bodies on people to box them out, you know, you have a tendency to be able to wear people down. And uh, I think that's the one thing, you know, our, our defensive transition needs to be perfect. You know, we don't need to give up any easy layups, any easy baskets uh, in a broken floor. We need to be able to, in the half court, defend, keep our guys in front of us, limit them to one shot, and uh, and keep our turnovers down, which I think we did a pretty good job the first game. We had five in the first half, five in the second half. That's good. You know, the, the the lower your what's the goal there for turnovers it's ten, mean, ten about that's pretty good yeah I'd say a, a, that's pretty good for a team you know especially in your first game when you haven't played against anybody else you know not bad you'll take it yeah the, w- what you want is is you know every time you have the ball can you get a shot at the basket right so I mean the more shots the more shots you get the better chance you got the the least amount of turnovers leads to more shots. And you talked about it earlier, but the fact that you guys were able to get around the basket a lot and just couldn't finish, and that's one thing that you know you go back to the drawing board on that and say, hey, you got to go to the hoop. If you, if you get fouled, you get fouled. But you know, if, if you got a chance to make that basket, that's as close as you're going to get. Yeah, and I think I think those are the things that that you know, like like the question what it's asking. Hey, what do you need to work on? Mm-hmm. Well, just just what just what you saw, you know, from watching the game or. or whatever you know i mean hey we didn't finish a lot of plays around the rim we had some some turnovers in the open floor where we could have scored baskets that's got to stop we got to improve that um the three-point shooting wasn't where it needed to be okay well we need to work on that and we and to me i I don't think it's uh, because we don't have guys who can make those shots i think it's shot selection and decisions on shots uh and and being able to make an extra pass to where I get where you just get a perfectly wide open shot, and I think the more times we do that, the better our percentage will be. And the more you move the ball, the harder it is to guard. And a lot of times those threes, if one guy makes one, all of a sudden you know the, the lid's off, and, and guys just start you know throwing them up there and making a lot more. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree with you. When you look at at, at this team with Jaden Gardner, and, and he's obviously the centerpiece of this squad, but having a big guy and big men off the bench, how much does that help him around the basket? Uh, I think it helps him a lot. I think, uh, you know, his game uh, is unorthodox. It is unorthodox. I mean, that's a, I mean, it really that's is. That's fair. I mean, because um, what what he is able to do consistently is one face up and drive people the second thing is he draws a ton of fouls and the third thing is he makes free throws yeah you know a lot of people you know you'll you'll talk to them about big guys and they'll say hey what's the number one post move or what do you need to teach those guys make free throws yeah that, that's the number one post move because if you can throw it in and around the basket and that guy's either going to score or he's going to get fouled or both that's a really good post move to have, being able to shoot about 75% yeah. or above from the free throw line by a big guy. Because you know late in the game, you can grind it down, get it to them, something yeah. good's going to happen. If they get fouled, they go to the free throw line. But he's just really good. He, he's really good at facing up. He's really good at shooting 15-foot jumpers. He's really good at uh, shot faking and, and getting people off the ground and driving it. Um, and he, he doesn't mind contact. So, uh, he's unorthodox, and, and and I think having those other big guys um, allows him to get sometimes better matchups. You know, and the other thing is, you know, it depends on how some people play. You know, some people they want to play they want to play small. Some people they may want to play two two really big guys, and if that happens, 
they're at a disadvantage with him. Yeah. Because he's really hard to guard. And he went through a spell last year where it seemed like he made every 15-footer that he took. And then, then it looked like late in the season, maybe he couldn't hit his shot as much as he was. I think he got us all spoiled is what he did. Yeah. Because you can't make all of them. No. But it, it seemed like for a while that he did make a lot of them, didn't he? he he's, uh, uh, again, that the, you know what his game is, he's really, really good at it. Shot faking, getting people off the ground, one bounce, pull up, shot. Uh, getting to the rim, drawing contact, making free throws. Um, and he's he's really good in the middle of the floor, you know, putting the ball on the floor and being able to get to the rim. He's just he's a hard he's a hard cover. He, yeah, he really is. He's unorthodox, as you said, and he's just it seems like his motor's always running, and he's always in there, you know, you know, trying to knock a ball away or trying to you know get the ball inside and, and going up. And as you said, the key is making those free throws because so many times last year, you know, you might look at a box score and he might be three of eight from the field, you know, six points, and then you know, nine of eleven from the free throw line. Yeah, you know, and that's that's where he gets all his points from. But that's that's part of the game, no doubt. And and you know, I think being dependable you know it goes back to being dependable you know like you said you 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 kind of know what you expect right. out of him you know you're thinking every single time that he's out on the court that he's probably going to get 20 points and 10 rebounds mm. or in that area yeah and that gives you something to build on and build around and uh you know, I think that's why we have a chance. So, I mean, the first time was in the playoffs, in the state playoffs in high school basketball when Minji's hosted the regionals and saw him in that game. And I thought to myself, he's going to be a pirate. And I, I wonder if he's tall enough. I wonder if he's, you know, big enough to do it. Yeah. I mean, he just he, – and he played the same type game in high school. I mean, that's – he was tough in high school. When I was at Virginia Tech, we had uh, uh, recruited his teammate, who's now at VCU. And uh, so I was there a lot. And that kid had committed to us when he was a sophomore. So I saw him since he was a sophomore. They're same same age. And um, everybody, I think, thought the same thing that that you said. Because when you're that height and you're not sure what position he right. is and he's not a knockdown three-point shooter. Right. Okay, well, what level Where does, he, does, fit in? does yeah. he fit in? And uh, I saw him again his senior year uh, at Chapel Hill in the state championship game. And actually, I had my son with me and uh, played played very well. And again, you're still thinking the same stuff. And but now he goes out there against high level people and does the same thing. So I mean, it's. You know, a lot of this stuff is, you know, you, you want guys to be prototypical. You want them to be this height, this weight, this length to play this position. But sometimes it, it doesn't it doesn't work that way. And sometimes guys, you know, hearts are bigger than the analytics. And, uh, you know, they play with a chip on their shoulder. And I think that's the way he plays. Steve Rockefeller live in the studio with us on this Monday. We'll take another commercial break. Come back with more. We'll start to preview the matchups coming up tomorrow afternoon, 5 o'clock, East Carolina, North Carolina, Wesleyan. And then on Saturday, East Carolina and Radford. We'll talk about that coming up after this. Suck Furniture is overstacked and overstocked. Overflowing inventory means clear out prices. Hurry in and take advantage of the biggest and best deals throughout our showroom. Save up to 20% off the best furniture brands. Lazy Boy, Bassett, Kincaid, Rowe, and Restonic Mattresses. Plus, just for this sale, 12 months special financing or choose 48 months special financing. There's savings on top of savings. We're overstacked and overstocked. And that means big savings for you at Bostic Sug Furniture. BMS Builders is your premier custom builder in eastern North Carolina. With Blackwood in Mills Creek in Greenville, Dalton's Cove in Farmville, and Belmar in Aden, these are just a few of the developments featuring BMS Builders Homes. They can build the home of your dreams. Just ask Dr. Dennis Ross in Greenville or East Carolina football coach Mike Houston. They built their homes and they can build yours as well. BMS Builders. Give them a call at 916-1578 for BMS Builders. It's bow time. The barbecue sandwich from Bojangles is back. Wait, wait, Bojangles has barbecue? Yeah, keep going. Well, okay then. 
We're talking tender pulled pork with a tangy Carolina vinegar kick. Unforgettably topped with our country coleslaw, all on perfectly toasted buns. So if you're like me and missed it last time, get your hands on a barbecue sandwich combo pronto. It's bow time. Hi, this is Luke Keekley. Last season, I was captain on defense. This season, since so many of us will be watching football from home, I'm football watching with Pepsi. And you know me, I pour everything I've got into it. Ah. All right, football watchers, let's do this. Open and click offs. Here we go. Click on, click off. Click on, click off. Stretch that thumb. You can't have finger fatigue bringing you down in the postseason. Nice job. And my favorite, second half sip offs. Pepsi's up, lift, pull, open. Mmm, ice cold Pepsi and watching football. Nothing better. It's not game day without a delicious, refreshing Pepsi, the official soft drink of the National Football League. Head to your nearest retailer, grab your Pepsi before kickoff, then sit back, relax, and cheer on your favorite team. Pepsi, made for football watching. Do you think you or your employees might have been exposed to COVID-19? Art Point Labs of Greenville offers same-day COVID-19 results. No referral needed. Same-day results available. Art Point Labs of Greenville offers easy employer solutions to COVID-19 testing. Art Point Labs of Greenville is located across from Vited Hospital on Executive Circle behind Southern Bank. Call for an appointment or walk in. Art Point Labs of Greenville, 215-5688 or artpointlabs.com. This is Coach Steve Shankweiler, offensive line coach for East Carolina University football. And you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to the Brian Bailey Show. Now, back to Brian. Hi, welcome back to our show with Steve Rockenforth, the ECU Associate Head Coach Basketball with Coach Joe Dooley on that East Carolina staff. Had a caller call in, wanted to know about Charles Coleman, and he, he kind of asked the question, does he guard people with his arms down? Do you guys see him out there? With, do you have to get him to get his, get his hands up? I, I think that uh, not only him, but everybody else <laughs> needs to have their hands up. You know? <laughs> they all do. Well, I mean that's and that's one thing you hear coaches all the time. You haven't do guys get tired during the game and their and their hands naturally come down? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. It's like a boxer, you right? Know? You, you you cover your face pretty good yeah. for about the first three or four rounds, <laughs> and after that, it's it gets harder to do. But uh, the other thing with big guys is they're they're laying. Uh, there's a lot of wood being laid, you know, underneath, so they get a lot tireder than the other guys because. Those guys are seven foot, two hundred and fifty five yeah. pounds, sixty pounds, just laying on each other, you know, inside, yeah. and uh, you know, I, I think they get probably a little bit more worn down than the guys on the perimeter, uh, but you know, with all our guys, I mean, I think that's another key to our defense, you know, to play with our hands up and our hands out, to use our length, to use, you know, our, our how big we are uh, to our advantage. So, yeah. I think we need to, not only him, but everybody. everybody else needs to do a better job of that. All right, Kyle writes in and says, in the past, Division two games have not counted towards postseason play in terms of your record. Will that be different in this year with COVID? Yeah, I think it is. I'm not 100% sure. I think it but, is, too. But we wouldn't be playing them if it wasn't. Right. So uh, I think because of all the scheduling issues and the way things are going to go with people needing games, uh, I think they wavered that. All right, let's take a look at the games coming up now. East Carolina has scheduled a game with North Carolina West and it'll be played tomorrow afternoon at 5 o'clock. No fans will be allowed. Uh, there'll be very few people in the gym. I know as far as the media goes, each outlet is allowed to have one person. So uh, I'll be watching it on the feed. Uh, we'll have our photographer, Noah Knight, will be there for us. And it'll be very, very different. And they're going to be spaced in the stands. It's one thing, you've never been allowed to shoot really in the stands, but this year you have to shoot in the stands. So they'll be they'll be spaced around. Uh, you'll be getting video from, from a higher you know level. But uh, you got to keep everybody safe is the reason for that. Uh, Wesleyan is 0-2. Wesleyan lost at Elon 82-52 and lost to Coastal Carolina 117-68. to So obviously Wesleyan has taken the bull by the horns and they're playing some pretty good basketball teams, aren't they? Yeah, they need to be 0-3 after tomorrow. Right. At, about, at about 8 p.m. tomorrow night Eastern time, they need to be 0-3. Well, you can only hope. What, what do you see so far in scouting them? Well, you've scouted a lot of teams and you haven't gotten a chance to play. Hopefully you'll get a chance to play this one. They they are not 
they're one of the teams I haven't scouted. Oh, really? So the other guys are doing that scout, but uh, they've got a couple of guys that can really score. They try to play fast. Um, you know, they'll play some zone, some two three zone man. Uh, you know, I, I think the most important thing for us is is to play somebody other than ourselves and to to go out and play well. You know, I mean, it doesn't matter who we're playing. Right. You know, I thought we played uh, pretty good against Charlotte. We could have played better. Right. Uh, but we won. So to to not play your very very best and be able to win a game on the road, I think is a pretty good accomplishment. Um, now w- what we need to do is 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 build on what we did and what we've done at practice between the last game and this game and go out and play really well and win. Next up will be Radford on Saturday. Again, that's a 2 o'clock start. Radford's 0-3, losing at Virginia Tech 77-62. They lost to Norfolk State, and that game was played in Harrisonburg, Virginia, 57-54, and then they lost to James Madison 67-59. So, uh, and I'm not sure what their schedule is for this week, but obviously uh, they're off to a little bit of a slow start, but they're playing good teams too. Yeah, and, and they've been really good. You know, I think uh, I do know more about them because I am scouting them, but uh, – you know, I think uh, Mike Jones and his staff at Radford, they've been there. He's been there about 10 years. Um, and I think the thing about them is they have a championship pedigree. You know, they've they've been good. They've won in their league. They've won and went to the NCAA tournament and won games. So um, they had a really good team last year. They had like six or seven seniors, uh, won like 21 or 22 games. Probably would have went to the NCAA tournament yeah. last year, lost all those guys. So he now has you know new pieces and a lot of you know new people to put together. Uh, they played a, a really good game at Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech beat Villanova. They played a really uh, close game against Norfolk State at James Madison, lost by f- four or five points. Uh, and last night uh, went down big, sixteen. Uh, at one point and battled back and cut it to four, three, a couple of times. I mean, they had a chance to win the game. So, you know, w- once again, we need to come out Tuesday and play well and win, and we need to come out Saturday and play well and win. Did you see the uh, the women knocked off Virginia in Charlottesville? Did you see the, sh- the shot, the three-point shot that Justice G hit? To me, and Cliff, I think maybe you saw it as well, the hardest shot to make if you're going to actually mean to bank it is from that, that you know, kind of, kind of from the wing type thing <laughs> area. And, I mean, she threw it up there, and obviously you don't have to call bank. I'm not sure if she meant to bank it, but it just it banks right off there as pretty as it could go and swished right through. And I thought, oh, man, you talk about a clutch three. Uh, she hit that shot, and, and what a big win for them. I mean, that's, that's huge. I, I saw, uh, actually, when I was walking out the door of the office, I saw Coach McNeil walking in and, and uh, told her congratulations, yeah. and that was a huge, huge win. Yeah, it really Big was. Win. Yeah, congratulations to the East Carolina women, and I'm not sure when they play again. I would say go out and, and and support them, but you can't right now because of the COVID. But maybe check them out on the feed, and, and then in Pirate Football, East Carolina. I think they play the Thursday, by the way. And, right. uh, Kim McNeil will join us on Pirate Radio Live coming up tomorrow. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. good. Have Coach McNeil on. So that, that's a big. Did you win do for that before or after they won? Uh, after I did try to get her <laughs> on the program last week before they played their first game. So and she was more accessible after the win. It's, trying, even, it's even better. Yeah. You're trying to get me, coach, but you're not going to do it. Right. <laughs> and then, of course, the Pirates with that 45 point first half. I mean, has anybody anybody ever ever seen East Carolina do anything like that? That was that was just crazy. That first half and just uh, how well they played. And and I asked Coach Houston today when I talked to him how hard is and how hard is it in basketball as well when you get a big lead like that. You're not going out. You know, playing not to lose, but you know the whole second half. You knew if you didn't make any big mistakes, you're going to win the football game. And they, and they made the one on the kickoff return, but but still, that's that's difficult enough. But they held on 52-38. But what a great first half! And I think everybody's fired up for 2021, ready to rock and roll with that. All right, let's uh, take our final commercial break. We'll come back. We'll wrap things up with Coach Rockefort. Get him out of here. Get him scouting the uh, Pirates' next opponent, North Carolina Wesleyan, tomorrow. Back to wrap things up on this edition of the Brian. Bailey Show. 
Wouldn't it be great if you could get auto, home, life, and business insurance all from one agency? Well, that's where the Gavigan Agency comes in. They can help protect what is important to you. So why not simplify your life? See the Gavigan Agency in Greenville or give them a call today at 252-756-1400. Nationwide is on your side. Nationwide Mutual Insurance Company and Affiliates, Columbus, Ohio. Subject to underwriting guidelines, review, and approval. 2020 certainly hasn't been the year many of us were hoping for, but one thing has stayed the same. I'm Tim Sutton with Greenville Auto World, and our commitment to our customers has never wavered. Let Greenville Auto World show you how easy it is to buy a quality used car in Greenville. We believe in fair prices, superior service, and treating customers right leads to satisfied repeat buyers. Your vehicle is a big investment, and our customers trust us to keep them up and running with outstanding service and value. With Greenville Auto World, cross some hardies at Bells Fork. At Tiebreakers, we pride ourselves on serving big, big juicy wings. wings. I'm talking big and juicy. Our chickens are the same ones that kick sand in the other chickens' faces. If our chickens played football, they'd be linebackers. The competition's chickens, they'd be skinny little kickers. Trade those kickers in for linebackers. Tiebreakers is open every day at 11 a.m. Follow Tiebreakers on Facebook and Instagram for daily updates. Hidden phone trade-ins, hidden plan requirements, hidden catches. You won't find any of those at U.S. Cellular because we do things differently. And that means you can get the Samsung Galaxy S20 FE or Google Pixel 5 for free with no hidden requirements all season long. U.S. Cellular. Upgrade to fair. Terms and conditions apply. See store uscellular.com for details. This is Brandon Tate, owner and operator of Atlantic Wireless, an authorized agent for U.S. Cellular since 1997. Visit atlanticwireless.com to find the store near you. We go beyond on the call. Every team knows that two-point play can be a winning move. That's why I'm here. State Farm agent Timothy Sawyer and my team are here to help you go for two by combining your home and auto insurance. It's a great call that saves you time and money. So go for the win and score some savings by combining your home and auto. It's just another way we're here to help life go right. Call me, Timothy Sawyer, at 493-0002 today. Classic sports moments never get old, and neither does classic food from CPW's. CPW's classic menu is back with all of your favorites like tortellini CPW's, Cajun chicken and pasta, classic lasagna, the garbage pizza, the stromboli, calzone, Atlantic salmon, the Cajun fried shrimp wrap, and more. Start every meal off with your favorite beverage and CPW's fresh baked bread and garlic butter. CPW's, serving classics in Greenville since 1995. Stanton Square near the hospital. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show. Now, back to Brian. All right, welcome back as we wrap up this edition of The Brian Bailey Show with Coach Rockefort. Coach Rock joining us, the associate head coach and the recruiting coordinator of East Carolina. How's recruiting been for you guys as far as that goes with with COVID and the restrictions and nobody playing basketball in certain states? Actually, it's been really good for us. Good. Because even though we couldn't go out, we could watch all these events you know, watch these kids play, and, you know, we were able to sign three players in, in the early period, and, you know, I think it's going good. I think, And I think it, it gave us a bit of a jump on 2022, you know, the following class. So um, I, th- I think it's going well, and uh, I think it ended up kind of helping us. When you look at, at what you've got ahead of you with these two games coming up, will we see any other players that we didn't see in the opener? Or is there anybody that didn't get in that you really want to, you know, to try to get into the mix to maybe see if they can compete for that, you know, eight, nine, ten, eleven spot? Well, to be honest with you, you'd like to see all of them play. Yeah. You know, I mean, really. And, you know, if we do our job, you know, as a unit, um, ho- hopefully that can happen. And, uh, yeah, I think there's probably some guys that didn't play or didn't play as much as they would have liked uh, that that will end up being in the mix. As I told you earlier, Coach Julie said, you know, when, when there's only five that can play and everybody's got to learn their role, did, did most everybody on the team, you, you feel like, in that first game handle their role pretty well and, and understood it and, and excelled in it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. You know, I think, I think it's uh, – it's evolving, you know. I mean, I think I think you you constantly have to talk about it, and you constantly um, 
have to work towards that of what those guys need to be doing and how can you know and, and everybody's not not receptive to that you know what what somebody may think that they need to be doing to play is not what they need to be doing you know and and I've always said this you know w- w- whatever boss that I work for I like to go sit in with them and say take a pad and a pen and say hey coach what do you expect from me on a daily basis and write that down and then put it somewhere where I can see it every day. So if I get confused, <laughs> or if I get bogged down, I can read over it that these are the things that I'm expected to do on a daily basis. And I think that's what those guys need to do. You know, J- Joe's uh, very clear in their roles, he's, he, what we need and what we don't need. And, uh, you know, you, 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 as a head coach, you need to be able to trust the guys you put in the game. And it's different. It's different from being an assistant to being a head coach. And I've done both. Right. When you're an assistant, you work really hard to get to know everybody and their families and have a tremendous relationship with them and, and open communication. And as an assistant, you want to see everybody play. You know, you want to see right. everybody play. You want to win. You want everybody to be happy. As a head coach, you, you want to win the game. Yeah. So today I might play seven guys. <laughs> That's right. Tomorrow I might play eight. The next game, I might play six because the only thing in my mind is what do I need to do to win this game? Right. And, you know, I, I, I think that's the difference between being an assistant and being a head coach, and I understand that. And then you have to be able to manage your guys and make sure that everybody's on the same page. Final question now. What do you want to see out of this ball club when you take the floor at 5 o'clock at Williams Arena at Menjie's Coliseum tomorrow? Uh, I would like to see see those guys come out with an unbelievable intensity and an unbelievable desire to defend uh, and really share the ball on offense and and uh, let's let's take wide wide open shots shots that me and you can make you know nobody <laughs> nobody within twenty five feet of us. All right, let's take some open shots. That's Steve Rockerford. He is the associate head coach at East Carolina for Joe League. Uh, coach, thanks so much. I know you guys got a lot going on. Your your scouting teams. You don't even get a chance to play. You got so much happening with the COVID and everything. But we certainly appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks for having All me. Right. On. That's Steve Rockerford joining us. And that is this edition of the Brian Bailey Show. We'll see you back here next week. Have a great sports week, everybody. East Carolina Pirate basketball and Wesley and tomorrow at five, and then Radford at two o'clock on Saturday. Have a great Monday, everybody. This has been the Brian Bailey Show, brought to you by...